With just 36 hours to go until the touchdown on Mars, a crew would exercise harder than ever. After six months of weightlessness, they would soon have to cope with gravity again. And moving around on the surface in a spacesuit would not be easy. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. One of the most crucial technologies still lacking today for a Mars mission is a practical spacesuit. Apollo moon suits were little more than inflexible pressurized bags, adequate for life support, but awkward for getting around. The Mark III spacesuit, designed and built at Johnson Space Center in Houston, is a major improvement. It was intended for zero gravity work on the space station, so it's probably too heavy for Mars. But it demonstrates how putting dozens of airtight joints around the suit lets a person bend and move in a natural manner, while still getting the protection of a pressurized shell. The first steps for designing a Mars suit have already been taken in this water tank at the NASA Ames Research Center. Because people naturally float in water, to simulate Martian gravity, research subjects wear a series of weights distributed all around their bodies. Okay, are you ready to exit onto Mars? Martian gravity is 39% of the gravity we have on Earth, so a 150-pound man would weigh only about 60 pounds on Mars. He would also fall more slowly when he jumped up and down, but not this slowly. Bruce Webbin is director of the spacesuit program here, and he's realized that his subject Eric needs a few more weights. Eric should now feel as heavy as if he were on Mars. Okay, power's on. Motor's on. Part of what Bruce Webbin wants to know is how far a person's joints bend when he walks in Martian gravity. This will determine how flexible a Mars spacesuit must be to allow natural movement. We're at one mile an hour now. We're going to go up to three miles an hour, okay? Okay, three. Webbin also wants to know how much less energy it would take to walk in the lower gravity of Mars compared to on Earth. As you decrease the gravity, it makes sense that the effort to move would probably be less. But if you go all the way to zero gravity, then you can't walk. It's a completely different means of locomotion. And so the real interesting questions are what happens in between. And so we need to learn what sort of effort it takes to move and walk on Mars. While the research subject exercises, Webbin measures the carbon dioxide he produces, one way of gauging the expenditure of energy. This will determine how big an air tank astronauts will need to do a day's work on Mars, and how much air conditioning they'll need to stay cool. If this kind of research isn't done, uh, then what would typically happen is, as an engineer, you would over-design. So you would, you would always design the system to be safe, but it would be much larger, the life support system would be much larger than it really needs to be, and the suit would uh, not be optimized at all. To perfect the design of a Mars spacesuit, Webbin hangs weights at various places on a backpack frame. This will help determine the best place to concentrate the mass of the life support system, as well as where astronauts should carry things like tools or geological samples collected in the field. Each time the weights are moved, Webbin measures how that affects the subject's balance, comfort, and energy consumption. Eventually, we'll learn how to distribute the mass of the life support system. It won't necessarily be a backpack. It, it might be that it's more efficient to have the uh, uh, life support components distributed around the body, some of them in front, some of them in back. Webbin says he could build an ideal Mars suit in just three or four more years, but further work has now been put on hold by NASA.